Hey everybody, this is just going to be a short, condensed version of this lecture. Um, I'm literally just going to tell you a little bit of background, read the declaration to you, and tell you what you need to do if you miss class today. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I know you don't want to watch 20-something minutes of a lecture. So it's, I'm going to try to keep it around 10 minutes for you. I'm going to do my best around then. So I'm uh, going to talk about the Declaration of Independence. Uh, Thomas Jefferson's credited for writing it. Um, it was actually a combined effort by John Adams, Ben Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, Roger Sherman, and Robert Livingston. So um, at this point, I would say, class, take a look at this picture I drew. Tell me what you see. Obviously, I didn't draw this picture, guys. You know that. So you would tell me you see some guys in wigs sitting down watching some other guys in wigs sign a piece of paper. You would be absolutely correct. That's exactly what's going on. But I want more detail than that. What else do you see? So at this point, please pause this video and just make observations. I'm not going to explain a whole lot on this section, but just pause the video, make some observations. Ready, set, go. Okay, hopefully you pause the video and you're ready to go now. Let's get going. Uh, background. So Jefferson himself claimed that he gives his credit to John Locke, Montesquieu, the Scottish Enlightenment, and the law and struggle for English civil liberties. So uh, we got John Locke and Montesquieu, two important figures uh, that led to the founding of our nation. Obviously, if Jefferson himself claimed that they, uh, that credit must go to those two. Um, the Scottish Enlightenment, which Enlightenment was the age of reason, um, and then the long struggle for English civil liberties. Um, no, there are not any hidden messages on the Declaration of Independence that we know of. I'll throw that in there, that we know of. But as for all the National Treasure people out there, if you haven't watched that series, you need to watch the National Treasure series. It's phenomenal. Um, but anyway, I'll continue the lecture. Um, on the back of the Declaration of Independence, it actually says original Declaration of Independence slash dated 4th July 1776. This isn't a secret message. It's not something, it is a little bit weird. It is a little bit weird, but it was on there because it was likely used as a label because it was stored on a shelf in the 19th century from the things that I've read. So that's why it's so faded. If you go to Washington, D.C., you can barely read the Declaration of Independence. It's so faded. That's because it was stored so poorly in the 19th century. Uh, then I would ask for you all to explain to me what you know about the Declaration of Independence. Um, just because you've had so much, so much of it, or so much instruction on it. Um, so the text, three sections to the Declaration of Independence. That's all there is. Uh, the first section is a general statement of natural rights theory and the purpose of government. Uh, the second section is a list of grievances against the British king. We're not going to read that section. I'm just going to explain it to you. Um, then the third is the Declaration of Independence from England. So um, without further ado, let's go. I'm going to stop my webcam and just read it. Uh, the unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America, when in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth, the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and nature's God entitle them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident um, that all men are created equal. You have heard that phrase so much in your lifetime. And you're going to hear it even more. All men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So they're saying we have unalienable rights. These rights cannot be taken away from us. These rights are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We have heard this so much, and this is where it comes from, uh, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it. They are saying if these rights are taken away by any form of government, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish, or get rid of that government, and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles 
and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence, indeed, will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes, and accordingly all experience hath shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and usurp usurpations uh, pursuing invariably the same object evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism. It is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Such has been the patient sufferance of these colonies and such is now the necessity which constrains them to alter their former systems of government. The history of the present king of Great Britain is a history repeated of repeated injuries and usurpations that all having in direct object the establishment of an absolute tyranny over the states. To prove this, let facts be submitted to a candid world. And then it goes on to say that um, he did this, and he is King George, is the King of Great Britain, but it says he did this, he did this, and it lists all the grievances, all the things that King George did wrong, and that uh, how he took away the rights of the Mer er, American colonies. Um, in every stage of these oppressions, we have petitioned for redress in the most humble terms. Our repeated petitions have been answered only by repeated injury. A prince whose character is thus marked by every act which may define a tyrant is unfit to be the ruler of free people. And then here we go, the ending. We, therefore, the re representatives of the United States of America in general Congress, assembled, appealing to the supreme judge of the world for the restitute of our intentions, not intestines, wow, rectitude of our intentions due in the name and by authority of the people of the good people of these colonies, solemnly publish and declare that these united colonies are, and of right, ought to be free and independent states, that they are absolved from the allegiance to the British crown, and that all political connection between them and the state of Great Britain is and ought to be totally dissolved, and that as, a, as free and independent states they have power to levy war, conclude peace, contract alliances, establish commerce, and to do all the other acts and things which independent states may of right do, and for the support of this declaration with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. So I promise I keep this around 10 minutes, and I'm a little bit over, I'm sorry, um, but basically I want you to think about what the declaration is meaning. We already kind of talked about it, I just wanted to read it to you, uh, try to make this a little bit shorter for you. Um, you don't have an assignment this week, so, or this class period, so you don't have to worry about an assignment. I just want you to think about the Declaration of Independence. Think about what it means. I mean, look at the last line. We mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. That is very powerful. That is a wonderful line. Um, so again, no journal prompt for today. Don't have to worry about that. But I do want you to write an email to your job shadowing host um, and ask if it would be okay for you to do your job shadow on February 9th, okay? That is your only job. So make sure you write that email and make sure it's okay that you go February 9th because that's when we're doing our job shadowing day. And that's all I got for you. Have a great night. Hope to see you in class soon. If you're sick, get to feeling better.